Hello, everybody. This is Carl out at Manibu Farms, and this is... Oh, I'm Terry. Nancy. And Gladdy. And all of us, plus many more, are going to be moving out to this land that you see here up in the northeast California high mountains at 5,300 feet in basically a desert. Yeah. Oh. You know, you might be wondering how we told you before that we plan on turning this into a wonderful food forest, something that looks similar to this little picture here, yeah. where <laughs> where every single plant is edible or usable in some way. And I mean, yeah. can you imagine standing on a trail on our little roadway outside of our house and like looking at our property there and then turning to the left side and looking at that, turning back to the right side, looking at our house? It's, that's gonna be beauty like, crap. Wow. Beauty <laughs> crap. <laughs> something that stands out of the middle of nowhere. Where did this come from? So anyways, the way we plan on doing that is by this general vision board here. This first off is not to scale. Second off, it is just a general outline, something that we can draw inspiration from, look at and visualize and remember, hey, we want these kind of ideas. And we'll be going over every little piece of this idea or blueprint with you guys, slowly but surely. And hopefully you'll get to know not only our dream for the future, but also get to know more about us. And two of these people, Terry, and Gladdy, you hardly ever, if at all, see on our cameras because they are camera shy. So that's why we got them to come do this voiceover, the slideshow thing today for you guys. Maybe I can sneak some pictures in at the end of them. All right. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I got pictures of you. You've done kindness <laughs> events around here, girl. I got all sorts of video footage of you walking across the streets, picking up garbage off the streets. We're making sure that our community looks good. All right, this is a blank representation of our land. Yeah, the brown lines are road. The blue line is gutter. That's right, a nice little water gutter, which we only get two, two inches of rain a year on average. So I don't know how much that water flow is going to do for us, but we will be making use of that road runoff as much as possible. Um, and the first thing we're going to do by the county's rules. And it's pretty much the only rule the county has. Like, they say if we stick up a septic system on our property, we have a house. After that, they don't care if we live in tents or what we do, as long as we have a septic system. So the first thing we're going to do is put in a septic system. Yay! For some of us, we're glad about that. <laughs> Little black box. Okay. Now, after we set, put in the septic system, of course, the natural thing that comes off of that is the leach fields where it leaches out. And that's where we're going to grow our nitrogen crops that we can, what most people have, call cover cut crops, cut and drop crops. But we're going to cut and move and drop and then replant more cover crops in that one area. Um, What's an example of those cover crops? My favorite, because it's so useful, is comfrey. Um, it's also what I call a good soldier. Exactly. Um, I like it comfrey the most because it's a good soldier. It will, no matter what you do to it, it will keep coming back. It will keep fighting and it will keep spreading and feeding people. And oh, so we should take some fennel with it. Yes, some of our fennel would be good out there as well. If fennel were grow at that height, I don't know. What about potatoes? No, uh, no we don't want to grow root crops in the septic area. Yeah. That's, we don't want to grow anything really we're eating here. We want to grow stuff that we're going to be putting out on just cutting down and putting over the rest of this land, this <clears throat> land on the map right now. Or if they're nitrogen crops, you could also use them with the compost. Exactly. So that we can bring the rest of that ground into a covered forest floor. I mean, when you go out and look at the forest floor and you grab it, you stick your hand in there with needles, and leaves, and dirt, and sticks, and poop. And compost. Compost, basically. And so we want to cover our whole land with that. The next thing we're going to dig and put on there is a well. We can't tell you where on this map the well's going to go because we have not surveyed the land. We have not done these things until we get out there. It probably won't be anywhere near the bush, actually. But it's a good idea. Anyways, so we're going to put in a well. We're going to put in the bush and all the dirt that we gather from there. Plus, the next thing we're really going to put in is this lake down in the corner. And 
we dig out that lake, all the dirt all from all those places are going to go up in the top corner for to build us a huge mountain, basically a fresh dirt that we dug up. What's the time period to dig that at 12 and a half? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, well, let's see. It's going to take us three months just to move out there. During that three months, we can't do much of the work. I mean, we can do some things. Especially in that three months, we're probably going to start getting frost. Exactly. And the ground will be too hard for us to do anything. So, after those three months, if companies and things can put in a septic system in winter, which I don't know if they can, I don't think they can, but if they can put in in a frozen ground, they might be able to. Then we'll start putting in the septic system on month four. If we can't afford to put it in by month four, we will be able to put it in by month five. Then the well in the next month or month after. So that six, seven, let's say eight months from now, we should be breaking ground on putting in the lake. If everything goes well. Which nothing ever goes perfectly well. So let's just automatically assume next year or 12 months from now. So this time next year, we should be putting in the lake, hopefully. Would be a more realistic estimation. Yeah. And not uh, the hopeful estimation. Okay. So the reason why, the more important question I thought was, <coughs> was why are we building this hill? You know. And to do that is to put in a lake, or, or not to go to the lake, to put in a small pond that we will then make a river that we snake all the way across our property back down to the lake. Now, of course, I, I, we plan on putting trees and forest all the way up here in this little river. I didn't think we needed to draw that on the map. I thought that was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Obviously, oh, yeah. there's going to be trees on the side of the river. That's what's holding the water there in the root system. Okay. Um, so, after we've got a flowing water source that, you know, is being pumped back by solar power pumps. I didn't draw the solar panel, panels, on, panels on there at this time, but it'll be being pumped back up to the pond there, number one. And then the next thing after that, we finally get to really focus our money on building our homes because now we have an ecosystem starting to evolve. We have trees planted, we have things going, we have water flowing. We can start putting in houses. And by that time, we'll know what, where the right place to have. Yeah, we'll know where our snow falls, if any. We'll know where the rain flows, if any. We'll know well, where the well, wind I, blows. Yeah. And, and also, you know. We're kind of having to put our houses next to the septic system. That's a good point. Yes, we have to put our houses next to the septic system so that we can use that, utilize that septic system. Also, we want to, if for those who don't want to utilize the septic system, who are wanting to do the human manure and things like that, you at least want to be using your gray water from your sinks and from your showers and things like that to be flowing off into that leach field so that we don't have to water that leach field. Um, now, of course, another big thing is the the way the houses are in that little shape around it. Of course, they could be in a circle. They could be houses, could be squared. They could be anything. I just do that to represent a tiny house village. And I say tiny house village because we all... I think every single person plans on tiny homes in one way, shape, or form. I think one person wants to put in a double wide. And then, I was thinking of that too, like a single wide. And then the rest of us are looking at more the either homes on wheels or tiny shacks or cob housing. I want a hobbit house. She wants a cob, hobbit house made out of cob. Anyways, we will. the next real big thing is to... Put in the big commercial aquaponics greenhouse. And I mean, I, I personally am, would vote to try to beat world records here. I want the largest aquaponics greenhouse that we can build. 
I mean, if you're thinking this whole map here represents 20 acres, look how big I want that aquaponics greenhouse. Okay. Yeah, at least three, four. Right, I'm serious. I want this thing to be a monster. And I want us to pile number 16 marked on the map there are copper coils where the water from the lake that's being pumped up will be pumped through these copper coils, these big giant mountains of coil that we are going to bury in compost. This will heat the water that comes out so that it's that number one, that little pond over there becomes more like our hot tub all winter long that we can enjoy when our muscles are sore from working on the land. Also keeping our lake from being frosty and our fish alive in there and healthy and everything going good. We will of course have to work out how far we want these compost bins how tall we want them, how, and basically just to control the heat well, in the lake. I have a question. Does each coil need an individual compost pile, or can you just put the compost, put them all in like the same compost box? You can totally put them all in the same compost. We may only need one. Yeah. I have seen one, a video footage of one four foot, by, I think it was four foot by four foot coil system. Yeah, that they use to heat... They pumped it into their house and used it to heat uh, showers. A no, they used it to heat a furnace. Oh, that was a different video. The one I'm talking yeah. about, the one I can remember the math for, was a four foot by four foot mound of compost that was heating a shower that they were getting 15 minute showers out of. And it reheated up every 20 minutes or so. So, I mean, that was pretty, that's pretty amazing. And it was 96 degrees the water was coming out. That's, that's like, better than those, those new water heaters. They have yeah, that's now. better than those on-demand things. You know, it, it's really <laughs> and this amazing. this is compost-powered. You know, no bill, no nothing. So it will also heat this huge, gigantic commercial greenhouse to keep our plants healthy, where we can try to do tropical things that we normally couldn't do up there. Um, I have daydreams of even trying to pull off a chocolate and a coffee plant, both, cocoa. to try to try cocoa and try to do... Coffee to try to see if we can get that done here in America and in California. Um, I think that covers the greenhouse, right? Yeah. And you got any of them? I mean, besides the fact that what a great idea of having this nice warm pot area that we can go all hang out in all winter long. This is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. Uplift your brother. Uplift your sister Say we got to help each other